we continue to talk about the spiritual mindset of the prosperous leader. You can have mindsets that are not conducive to what you need to be. You can have a leadership, but having a prosperous leadership only proves that you're walking worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Now, what is a prosperous leader? Certainly it's not generated to money or how large your church is or how many people you're affecting. It's about you. It's about being called of God. It's about being that one like Mary who had that experience with the angel where she was overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says the angel called it a holy thing that was being birthed inside of her. Now she had to birth it. She had to raise it. She had to lead it lead it around and lead Jesus to the places he was going. She had to leave him, and then she had to follow him. So all of those things are compliant in the fact that you can have a prosperous leadership and have winter, spring, summer, and fall, all kinds of harvest opportunities and all types of winter opportunities. And many times we just get in the middle of a season and we wonder how long is this going to last. We wonder if we are at all called. We wonder if we have a holy thing. I believe that you can change the season that you are in. I believe it is up to you. Does that mean that there won't be winter-like activity? That there won't be fall-like activity? There won't be spring and summer-like activity when you are moving into a season you desire? Oh, I, I believe that concurrently with whatever season you desire in the Lord, there will be other seasons at work. And not all of them are evil. Many times there are places in your life that need to lay by in winter, that need the cold snow to get rid of the viruses and the, and, and the bugs and the, and the mosquitoes and, and, and get you ready for planting and harvest. I believe all that, but don't get stuck in a season. We have talked very, very healthily in this uh, session, and we've talked about one thing you can say every day. I will live and not die. This thing's not going to kill you. This ministry is not going to take you away. You, you can say I'm the head and not the tail. You can say I'm above and not beneath. You can say God is with me. You can say I'm at peace, and you have to learn to say I'm at rest. But let's talk about Number seven, I am fruitful. That's right. Go ahead and let it lay off your tongue. Even if you're having the worst day in 20 years, just say, I am fruitful. You see, the design of life and your enemies of life, sickness, health, the devil, people, all kinds of things, attitudes, religious um, matters, all of that comes against you to make you look that if you don't comply with other people or with other things, or you don't walk in a certain way, that you will not be fruitful. Well, that's, to who, that's according to who is counting. God is not counting things the way men do. Men see if you got a big car, men see whatever you're doing uh, in, in ministry and see if you have the uh, accolades of, uh, of, of society. That's what men see. But God sees a holy thing that he put in you and you alone, and now he wants to walk that out with you. But we have an obligation. Let me read you a scripture. Colossians 1 and 10. That you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Now, I know guys that will stop right there and go to preaching an hour-long sermon on what they think is walking worthy and what they think is all-pleasing unto the Lord. But let's read the rest of the scripture. The, 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 the conceptual thing that the writer is saying is actually this, being fruitful in every good work. Walk worthy unto all-pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. I want to tell you that hard times 
and the summer's heat down on you when you're harvesting, even just to make it, are probably some of the greatest times when you are most fruitful and you're not seeing it. God is seeing fruit of your desire to protect the holy thing. 34 years ago, I was left, uh, no, 37 years ago, I was left in Africa by my father-in-law. He and I are great friends and and we've long settled this issue, but the truth of the story was one of the things that made me who I am today in God and made myself that I believe I am pleasing unto the Lord. I know that I am fruitful in every good work, and I know that I have increased greatly in the knowledge of God. This is not being uh, conceited. This is not being proud. You must know where you stand. Is the Lord pleased? Well, I, I didn't know how to do that. Uh, I had been preaching in South Africa. I had a car and I had a, 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 an Airstream trailer and we were traveling from church to church, having a tent meeting, preaching, having great, being the guy on stage, being the guy that was laying hands on people and seeing miracles performed. And now I was invited to go into a nation that was at war and I was invited to work there while my father-in-law went home for working. Well, through a mix-up, and it was a mix-up, and later it was, uh, it was straightened, I was thrown into dire straits. Now, you don't go around complaining. Many people would have got on a plane and headed back for America. Many people would have uh, condemned others and been become, become very angry with it. I couldn't. My wife was pregnant, due to birth any day, we were alone. We didn't have family uh, there. We had good church people and good ministers and good sons and daughters in the gospel that, that worked with us and did those good things that, that they can do. But nobody from the United States was there while we were working so hard to bring our strength. I had been receiving money from the United States. Now, had my father known this, my father probably would have sent money himself. But Nobody knew it. In some way, I fell through the cracks and did not receive a check from the United States for over 17 months. Now, I, 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 I have to tell you, I lived that. When the money ran dry and, and we had all the things that you have of a missionary work, you have the gasoline, the cars, the, the house, you have, the, you have all the, the feeding, you have all the, the ministries at the church. I went to the church to get money and found out that I was, to, I, was, I was to be told that the money of the church was the money of the church and that it was not the money for me. I had to go to work. So what did I do? Well, I did many things and God blessed me. And there used to be a man that carried a briefcase like this. This is an elephant skin briefcase. And it was one that I, I liked. I always liked having a, a briefcase that we were taught uh, as young ministers to have a briefcase and, and walk in. When I, this briefcase was one that was, was in the shops. And it was worth a lot of money. And a lot of money to a guy who didn't have anything. And I began to ask the Lord to prosper me. I knew that I was walking worthy of him unto all pleasing. I was doing as my elders had asked, and I was also doing what the Lord had asked me. But I needed to be fruitful. The Lord began to send work my way. He began to send men that needed me to do this or do that, or, or, or in every way I began to do things, and it just came. I was willing to put my hands to the work. No, not preach, take up an offering that wasn't available. Start restaurants, raise chickens, mine for precious metals and, and, and precious uh, stones, semi-precious stones. Uh, I, I did every good work. But all the time, I was increasing in the knowledge of God. My faith was being tested. My faith was being pulled on. How to pay for bills. Finally, my daughter was born in an African hospital uh, and, and it was good. We're not uh, complaining of that. It was all right. It was great. But it was scary. They did it for free. Oh, the, the, the Catholic Church helped pay for it. I, I thank God for them until this day that they helped to take care of that. But do you know what happened during that 17 months? I came out with a trophy 
And if you ever come to my office, you might see a, a whole line of briefcases that represent places I've been, things that I do. Uh, this is part of that museum that, of faith that I walk through for my own self. You should have a pen and pencil set that you remember something by. You should have pictures. You should have things. You should go back and rebuild or go back and, and make sure that you have uh, memories of those things where God brought you to where you were pleasing, fruitful, and increasing in the knowledge. So on days I don't feel very fruitful, I go open one of these briefcases and I, I take a smell. The smell of this briefcase tells me and takes me back to a time that I rode a motorcycle because fuel was very short. Do you see this stripe right here? There's a stripe right here. This is from riding on the, strapped down riding on the motorcycle going over the, the roads. And here I was showing uh, uh, the favor that the Lord had put upon me. But now some 37, 36 years later, when I pick up this briefcase, and I can show you that I have a matching one that I found in the United States. And, and a friend of mine who was a developer uh, made sure that I have it in my office. Uh, I want you to know that this, that, that one is precious to me. It was a gift and it was, I thank God for uh, the way that I received it and the memories I have of the, of the great developer that, that, that made that possible. But, but it has near, not near the meaning that this has that God gave me a desire that I had in my heart just to have a briefcase. Not just any old briefcase, but a briefcase with gold latches and a briefcase that had elephant skin. He cares about what you care about. I was doing walking worthy unto him and all pleasing. He was giving me uh, the blessing that I had to live and to take care of what I had to take care of. And as a young man, didn't know, made so many mistakes. Oh my God, every day I woke up to uh, answer for a mistake that I made. But let me tell you, I was increasing in the knowledge of God. So you want to say right now, I'm fruitful. Just as important as saying I'll live and not die. And I'll, and I'll live to declare the works of the Lord. Just as, few, as important it is, is, is for you to say that you will go rest, that you are at rest, that you are at peace, that you will, you will go into all these good things that God is, is bringing you to because of that holy thing in you. Don't take it like it is a, a, a measure from God that is meant to kill you. Start enjoying the future by the past. So today when I walk in and pick up this briefcase, I can think of a whole lot of things that God did for me and in increasing me in his knowledge. Now, I appreciate the fruitfulness. I appreciate what God has done for me. I could, I could tell you that uh, uh, I had nice cars and I had nice clothes and my wife did all right and we did not go hungry. I'm not here to tell you that we, that we suffered and, and, and didn't have a shelter. Oh, no, 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 no. God is able to take care of you in protection of that holy thing. If you regard what you have as a holy thing unto God, you walk pleasing unto the Lord. You look to be fruitful. Many people don't look to be fruitful. Oh, well, I'm just suffering for God. I'm just suffering for the cause. God's not here to have you live for 70 or 75 years, bringing yourself into nothing. He wants you to be fruitful in every good work. Not only the saving of souls, not only miracles and signs and wonders, but at the end of the day, you have things to look back on that he did for you that no man did for you that only God could bring to you a blessing. And all the time, as you're now saying, I am fruitful, you know that it is because you continue to increase in the knowledge of God. God bless you. Have a great day. Go walk worthy. Go be fruitful and increase in the knowledge of God.